and celebrities. She has been in various newspapers like Economic Times, Business Standard, DNA, Times of India, Mumbai Mirror, and interviewed on Radio City and featured on Zoom, and conducted programs for companies like Johnson and Johnson, Bank of America, and Audi, to name a few. You can visit her website and YouTube and LinkedIn using the details given below. Ma'am, you could begin now. Thank you so much. Welcome everyone to today's session. Uh, it's been a wonderful, uh, you know, experience even listening to the other speaker. And I hope over the next 15 to 20 minutes, I'm able to give you some interesting insights on the art of communication. So obviously, like the previous speaker spoke, soft skills are really, really crucial in today's world. There was a research done at Harvard as well as Stanford University where they realized that as a person grows in their career, over technical skills, it's the soft skills that's going to really make a difference. Please go back to the previous slide. So while we talk about soft skills, there's so many different aspects like Ms. Gupta spoke about some time back. But communication abilities is one such skill that all of us need to develop and get better as we progress in our careers as well. And I can tell you this from personal experience because as a corporate trainer, I work across different levels of employees, right from, you know, freshers who are coming out of college all the way to CEOs. And let me assure you, if there's one topic that everybody needs work on, no prizes for guessing, it's communication skills. Obviously, the type of communication we're talking about evolves depending on what stage in your career you are going to be in, but it is a skill that it's worth mastering. Communication skills is one of the largest subjects that is taught on planet Earth. Think about it. Maximum books are on communication. Maximum courses are on communication. Yet, nobody can stand up and say, I'm an absolute expert on this subject. I'm here talking about it, but definitely cannot claim to be one. Because even in my life, I would have situations where there could be miscommunication, misunderstanding, because when we're communicating with human beings, it's about the emotions, the language barrier, cultural barrier, you know, the situation that we are in, so many things that could actually influence communication. So let's all, you know, firstly understand that communication is a complex subject, but at the same time, we all need to keep getting better at this entire concept that we're talking about. Next slide, please. So Ms. Gupta also briefly spoke about this, and this is a very, very important slide when we talk about communication skills. This is a slide or this model was created by Mr. Albert Mehrabian when he studied face-to-face -face communication. Of course, today we are in the digital space and, you know, this model would have evolved. But back in the day when it was about face-to-face -face communication, one thing was very evident. It is not just the words that we choose that defines whether the communication is successful or not. It's how we say the words, that is the voice, tone, intonation, pauses, accent, everything is 38%. But very interestingly, it's the body language, which is 55%. So if we want to be good at communication, rather than just focusing on what we are saying, we must spend some time to work on how we are saying it. So it's not just what you say, but how you say it. Think of the best speakers in the world. Think of the leaders in the world that inspire you. And you will notice they're not just good at, you know, the ideas, but it's also how passionate they are, the voice modulation, the body language that they use, that makes that communication so engaging and so interesting that we are hooked on to it. So uh, sometime back, Ms. Indra Noi, and I'm certain all of you know who she is. She's the former chairperson and CEO of PepsiCo. So Ms. Indra Noi was asked at a convention that what do you think are the five skills that are required for a leader? And she made this very easy by calling it the five C's. So according to her, the five C's were competency, courage, 
consistency, your compass or integrity, and last but not the least, communication skills. So this is a lady who was born in the year 1955 in Chennai in India. She completed her education in India, her master's as well, and then she got admitted into Yale University in the US. So even Ms. Indra Nui had to go through communication skills training. She had even flunked her test on communication skills. And in her summer break, she had to reapply for that entire exam. <clears throat> Sorry, because she came from India, she ended up speaking a little too fast for, as compared to the rest of the globe. So she had to work on, you know, ensuring that she speaks in a more fluent way, but at the same time at a, you know, lesser pace or speed. So she definitely talks about how communication has contributed to making her a successful leader in today's time. So if she had to work on her communication skills and continues to do so, none of us can ever over invest in learning communication. Let's move ahead, please. So when we talk about communication, a lot of us feel communication is more about speaking. Well, of course, it is about speaking, but it's also about listening and understanding what the opposite person says. So there is a concept called hearing and there is a concept called listening. Listening is when you're putting your entire focus, you know, you're focused on understanding what the opposite person is saying. Hearing could be, let's say there is some traffic noise at the back, or, you know, there's some external noise, the TV is going on in another room. You're not focusing on those sounds and you're hopefully listening to what I'm talking to you about. Right? So listening is where we put our focus. We try and understand what the person is saying. And obviously listening needs to be a practice that we need to, you know, definitely imbibe. Because in today's world, it's so easy for us to get distracted, whether it's our mobile notifications, you know, whether something that's happening, our attention span is very less. But if you want to be a good communicator, apart from speaking well and focusing on your body language, let's also understand that listening and engaging and being a good listener is also contributing to your communication abilities. Next slide, please. So this is a line that I personally love. Most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. Now think about all the situations in your life where possibly it was a heated argument. It was a conflict. And you will notice that when emotions are very high, we don't really listen. It's more about getting back. It's more about, you know, giving, giving back and contributing to that entire argument. And that's not going to make the communication effective. This is, in fact, one of the habits in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. He says, seek first to understand and then to be understood. So be a good listener if you want to be a good communicator. Next slide, please. So let me give you some insight. So we spoke about verbal communication, but let's also talk about non-verbal communication or your body language. So we have certain traits that you can display to be seen as a good listener. So we're going to use the example of a very popular actress called Priyanka Chopra, who's been in Bollywood and Hollywood. And let's understand how she displays the right body language to be engaging in, you know, a, a, an interview that was going on. So can we go to the next slide? So these are the ways in which you can come across as a good listener. First is the head tilt. So it's a very beautiful, very subtle way to show somebody that you are listening. This happens invariably whenever we are engaged in watching a movie or we're listening to something very interesting, you will realize that your head gets slightly tilted. So when there is a slight head tilt, it's actually nonverbal communication that lets the opposite person know that you are listening and you're engaged in what the person is talking about. Then, of course, sitting up straight. If you're going to slouch 
or you're going to be relaxed, the person will not feel that you're really interested in what they are saying. So try and keep your back straight and if required, even you know, move slightly closer to show better engagement. Tip number three, turn your body towards the person. If you're speaking with somebody and you turn your torso and body away, they're not going to feel that you're engaging with them. So ensure you turn your body and face them properly. Tip four, maintain good eye contact. Obviously, when we are speaking to someone, it's only respectful if we can maintain right eye contact they would feel far more important if we could do that. <coughs> Next slide, please. Even here, you can notice that Miss Chopra's body is slightly pushed forward. Also, if you look at her hands, they are not crossed, but she's left them slightly open because that also communicates a very positive body language. So even though the host may be asking her some challenging questions, her body language looks extremely calm and poised and confident and shows better engagement. Next slide. So hands should obviously be visible, which means that when you want to communicate well and you want to show engagement or show that you're interested, avoid keeping your hands away. For example, in a meeting, rather than keeping your hands under the desk or the table, if you can place it on top of the desk, that again shows a lot of openness and also helps you come across as more confident. Moving on. Some other tips that can help you come across as a good listener or an active listener, always end the conversation by paraphrasing or summarizing. This could be in a face-to-face -face meeting, it could be over a telephone call or a video call. So always close the conversation by asking. I just like to summarize our discussion and as discussed, I will need to work on one, two, three, is, is my understanding correct? So when you paraphrase or you summarize, even the person who's speaking with you feels important that you made it a point to make a note of whatever they've said. And you've also given feedback to close the communication cycle. So the opposite person is sure that you understood what they were trying to tell you. If you want to show more engagement during a conversation, ask interesting questions. It is not mean interrupting them. It only shows that you're really engaged in, in the conversation. But yes, do not interrupt when you're asking these questions. Whenever the speaker takes a pause or has completed a certain uh, you know, segment of what they're talking about, it's obviously polite to request. Is it all right if I can ask you a question? Or you know, I have something that I would really want you to add to what Okay, so when you show your curiosity, you show your passion towards what they're saying, that's a great way to show engagement and people would really appreciate some intelligent questions. Then intermittently give some feedback. Feedback could be topics like, like yes, interesting. Wow, that's fascinating. So when you use such words, these are not words that you're using to interrupt the speaker, but these are words that you're using to encourage so instead of interrupting and start conversation or uh, interrupting with a question while the person is speaking, when you use these words of, you know, which are um, positive words, it actually helps the speaker continue and share more about what they would like to. So these are some techniques that one can use when it comes to being a good listener. And I, like I said, that's a huge part of communication. So you've got some understanding of verbal as well as nonverbal communication. And last topic that I'm going to talk about, which is quite challenging, honestly, and you know, not many of us are equipped to handle this difficult conversations. It could be for uh, you know something that you disagree with. At, at your university, at your workplace. It could be speaking with somebody in the family. It could be giving feedback to somebody in the organization. We all will have to deal with difficult conversations at different stages in our life. So let me share some quick tips that can help you handle difficult conversations with ease. First thing, always look at a win-win solution. 
whenever you're having a difficult conversation, it's not me versus you. It's about both of us finding a win-win solution that's going to work for both parties. Whenever you're having a difficult conversation, rather than blaming the opposite person, try and reason out and go with some logic, go with some pointers that's going to help your point across. Number three, be extremely respectful. So even though it's a difficult conversation, like I said, it's an argument, it's a conflict, you're giving feedback to a subordinate, do not attack the person. Be highly, highly respectful of what you're talking to that person about because if they feel attacked, they are going to close themselves up and your communication is not going to reach. So that's why we strongly recommend something called the sandwich mechanism where you start with a positive note, give the feedback or the negative comments in between and close again with a positive comment. So let's assume you need to give someone feedback on a certain project that they were working with you. So I appreciate, you know, you tried to work on this project and you did a really good job. However, I feel that the PPT could have been designed much better. I'm certain that you'll definitely work better on the next project that we have. So when you use a sandwich mechanism, the impact of your conversation is far softer. And at the same time, the person gets the message. And last tip when it comes to handling difficult conversations, never use you statements, instead use I statements. Say, you did not do a good job. You did not call me on time. You did not send the email. So the minute we use a lot of you statements, again, they become very attacking. Instead, use I statements. I would have appreciated it if you could send the email on time. I would have really liked it if the project was sent on time. So the minute you use I instead of you, the person doesn't feel attacked and we can be very objective about the conversation that we are having. So I hope you found all these simple tips effective. Like I said, don't just focus on what you're saying, but also how you are saying, which means your body language, your voice, tone, pronunciation, all of it. Communication is not just about speaking, but it's also about being a good listener. And last but not the least, try and become a better version of yourself, not just in your technical skills, but also in your soft skills. Because as you progress in your career, technical skills are going to be more or less same. It's the softer aspect of your personality.